Hello, and welcome to our Tuesday night live Bible study. I'm glad that you're with us. I tell you, we're going to have a great time tonight. We've got my good friend, Arthur Manchess. Is that correct? You got it, Andrew. <laughs> I, I've been at this for over a decade, and I'm still having trouble pronouncing this name. And I'll give him a better introduction later, but he's one of our teachers in our school. Uh, is just a powerful, powerful minister. has a great revelation on grace. And... Uh, He's going to be speaking about faith, but I can guarantee you he will work grace into it because that's what has changed his life. And you will be blessed. But we've got Julie Ann Harris here with us, and she's going to tell you how you can get involved. And we've got some meetings coming up and some other things. And so, Julie Ann, I'll let you have it. Yes, so we have lots of announcements. I want to welcome you all this evening. And I'm just going to uh, call out the elephant in the room. Yes, I am the rose between two thorns. Mm -hmm. hey. You're the so, cream uh, between the two Oreo pieces. Exactly. How about that? <laughs> so, okay, so we have some announcements. First of all, Gospel Truth TV, you guys. This is 24 hours a day, um, seven days a week. You can go and hear Andrew and friends. And all you do is go into your web browser, type in gospeltruth.tv and you can watch 24 hours a day for free. Isn't that awesome? So I would encourage you to take advantage of it. Also, I want to announce some of our upcoming events. So this weekend we have um, Mr. Andrew and Pastor Dwayne Sheriff at the Identity in Christ Conference. So that will start Thursday night and it will go till Saturday, yeah, September 26th. So make sure to check that out. We will be live streaming that as well. We also have the Minister's Conference coming up on October 5th through the 9th. So this is an awesome time for ministers to come together and be fed. So please go online and check that out. Also on November 5th through the 7th, we have Women Arise, which is a women's conference. So you can't come, Andrew. I know. Okay. I have no identity crisis there. <laughs> I know who I am. Praise God. <laughs> okay, so if you want to find out more about all of our upcoming events, please go to awmi.net slash events. Next, we give away something free, not to everybody, but we do a drawing every Tuesday night. That's what makes Tuesday night Bible study special. And so how you sign up for that is you go to awmi.net slash Bible Bible study. And what you do is you go in and you fill out that form and that enters you in to win um, a drawing that we do each week. So I would encourage you to do that. Also, you get the Bible study notes when you do that. So um, whatever Arthur teaches on tonight, next week, Monday, you will receive his notes. And that happens every single week when you sign up. So please sign up because sometimes when you're listening, we would encourage you to just pay attention and soak in what God is wanting to tell you. And so uh, we can get too wrapped up in our notes sometimes. I mean, I'm a note taker, but just take it easy, sign up for the notes. And then also you're entered to win. Uh, last week's winner was uh, the book that we did was The Power of Imagination by Andrew. And the winner of that was Greg Seymour. So this week's drawing will be for The War is Over by Andrew, and he's autographed it. So please go sign up. You'll be entered into that drawing. Also, we want you to interact. So we do this live Bible study five days a week. I'm just going to do the schedule because I do it every single time I host. So Mondays and Fridays, we have it at 10 a.m. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have it at 6 p.m. And bright and early Wednesday morning, we have it at 7 a.m. And that is all mountain time. So I always stress that schedule for a reason because we want you to participate. We want you to be on here when we're live because as questions enter into your heart about what you're hearing, we want you to go into the chat section of whatever forum you're watching and start Start entering in those questions and then about the last 10 to 15 minutes of this program we will get to as many of those questions as we possibly can um, next let's see here oh this is a viewer supported live stream and listen we have five we were just talking about it before we went live we have five no seven live streams five on, Bible studies. five Bible studies a truth and liberty on Monday night and then healing school on Thursday at 1 p.m. so that is all supported by Andrew Womack ministry partners so I would encourage you folks if you are being blessed if you are being fed you need to pay where I shouldn't say need but I would encourage you to pay where you're eating and praise God there's a supernatural blessing this is good ground to sow into and so I would 
um, encourage you to think about becoming a partner, or you can just give. So how can you give? You can go to awmi.net slash give, or you can give our prayer ministers a call at 719-635-1111. And on that note, we have prayer ministers available to you five days a week, 24 hours a day. So that's Monday through Friday. We have prayer ministers that are trained in their authority. They know who they are in Christ and they want to pray with you. So if you are going through something right now, do not hesitate, give them a call. 719-635-1111. And I believe that is all. Awesome. Well, tonight we're really blessed to have Arthur with yeah. us. And I meant you, Arthur, I'm, I'm not sure the exact timing, but it's probably 15 or 20 years ago. Do you 20, remember? 21 years ago. Oh, 21. You remember. Yep. It was with Jim Richards. That's and right. We were speaking there and we were both staying in his house there. And that's where we got to know each other. That's right. and became friends and we ministered together for probably 10 years uh, just in different places. I went to South Africa. Arthur is from South Africa and I went there and ministered with him. But then I think it's been 10 or 11 years this that you the, moved to the States. This is the 11th year, yes. Wow. Yeah, and uh, Arthur and Kathy, I remember we brought them into the school. He's been ministering in our school. He ministered before them, but he's been one of our regular teachers for the last 10 or 11 years. And I tell you, he has a awesome revelation on the grace of God. And I just really appreciate it. I have students come up all the time. And of course, this is what changed my life. And I'm ministering about the grace of God a bunch. But I'll have people, students come up to me all the time and say, I've heard you say this, but I got it when Arthur said it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's really good. You're, it is good. You're reaching lots of people. And so what do you have for us today? Well, you know, just saying about that, you know, uh, that's a spiritual principle by the, the uh, voice of two or three witnesses, mm -hmm. a word is established. Sometimes people don't necessarily uh, get it from you or get it from me, but when they hear somebody else, another voice mm -hmm. saying the same thing, um, you know, advertisers use that principle. They use that same principle. They'll advertise something. They'll have a famous person yeah. talk about it. Then they'll have, you know, some somebody who's in politics talk about it. And by the third time, the person that comes, people start buying it on television. You know, so uh, it's a spiritual principle that, that and and I think sometimes pastors. You know, you'll go and speak at a pastor's church yeah. and, they'll, and he'll say, I've been saying this for six they years. They get offended. They do. I'm, I, I'm had, not going to call a name, but I went to a church and preached on Mark 11, 24, and people just were standing and shouting and the pastor got mad. Oh, yeah. And he got up the next week and he says, I've taught on this. Why did you get excited when Andrew taught it and stuff? So, <laughs> yeah. Some of that's insecurity. That is. Yes, that is. Well, tonight I thought about, um, when they asked me to do this, I thought about, you know, um, this whole uh, year has been a strange year. Yeah, and, you know, bit. just uh, who would have thought, <laughs> who would have thought that at the beginning of this year that uh, we would be experiencing a pandemic and, uh, you know, financial downturn and, and, you know, the whole world really being... Uh, destabilized in a way that it has been. And, and riots and people wanting to defund the police. And I would have I mean, never crazy dreamed things, that in my life. Right? And uh, so uh, since February until uh, about two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, my ministry really came to a screeching halt because no meetings, there were no conferences, there were no churches meeting, you know. And so um, when I started getting ready to uh, travel again and to speak again, I, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, so, you know, what do I, what do I teach on? You know, especially I'm going to go into churches, I'm going into uh, groups of, of people who have all gone through this craziness. And so what do you, what do you preach? And of course, during this time, people can easily get into, you know, all of the, um, um, and be influenced by fear and by all kinds of stuff. And then I found that a lot of Christians, unfortunately, got into some weird stuff, you know. <laughs> and so uh, the, I just felt the Lord really speak to me and say, the best thing that we can do as believers is to uh, fight the good fight of faith. Amen. To, to fight the good fight of faith. 
And of course, the, the Lord gave me three. He said, fight the good fight of faith, talk about faith, preach, teach on faith, uh, inspire people to fight the good fight of faith for themselves, yeah. number one. Yeah. Number two, for the people they love, the people that are closest to them. And then thirdly, for the people we are called to reach, each and every one of us, you know, all of the viewers watching as a believer, there's somebody that, that's looking at you. There's somebody that's, um, you know, uh, taking the, the, their, your cue from you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I believe that in a time like this, we as the church should be able to be a different group of people living, uh, you know, a, 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 from a different standard. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what I'd like to talk about here tonight and just share some things. Um, the scripture that I want to look at is, you know, it's a pretty well-known passage of scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and mm -hmm. uh, verses 11 through 14. And so, um, you know, when we look at this uh, from, here's Paul writing to a young minister and he's giving him some good advice about, you know, what to avoid in life. You know, this is where we have that passage of scripture on uh, the love of money is the root of all evil and all that kind of stuff. And then in verse 11, he says this, he says, but thou, O man of God, flee these things, follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. And in verse 12, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay a hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. So what we see here is Paul encourages him as a young minister. But, you know, today as we read this, this is an encouragement to each and every one of us you know, to fight the good fight of faith. And what does that do? Well, it lays a hold on eternal life. Amen. And it's not just, you know, that I'm going to live, you know, one day forever in eternity, but it's a quality of life. Amen. It's the same life that God has. It's the same life that God is living. I, I like to put it this way. It's the same quality of life that God uh, uh, that sustains God right now mm. is that he says, lay a hold on this eternal life where unto thou art called. And you know, for all, all of the, the viewers uh, of this Bible study is that, that this is what we are called to. We are Amen. called. This is a calling upon every believer to live the God kind of life, to enjoy the benefits of, a, of the God kind of life. And then he goes on and, he's, and, and, you know, verses 13 and 14 is very important too because he says, I give you charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Jesus, or Christ Jesus who, uh, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that you keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable unto the appearing of our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you know, when he says, I give you charge, the, the Greek there, is a, an, a, an authoritative prescription. Um, you know, like, like a script that you, when you go see a doctor, mm -hmm. and uh, so, you know, for whatever ails you, the doctor gives you a prescription. And uh, on the prescription is everything that he believes will help you be better or become better or to heal you or to help you uh, in a better life. And that's the same thing. He says, I give you charge, an authoritative prescription uh, in the sight of God. And then in verse 14, he says that you keep this commandment. Now, you know, they've translated commandment, but it's the same, it's the same word. This charge without spot, without uh, uh, unrebukable and to the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, every one of us has been really encouraged. And this scripture encourages uh, the reader to, you know what, fight the good fight of faith. Now we can talk a lot about what, that, what does that mean. But what I'd like to talk about here today is this, that there might be viewers right now, people who are listening to this and saying, you know, I want to be that different person. I want to be able to be the man or the woman who lives their lives and living a life of faith. Mm. Uh, the unfortunate thing that, I'm, that I've 
seen over the years is that uh, many people still have a lot of confusion and a, a misunderstanding really about what it is to live a life of, a life of faith and not only what it is, but who can, mm -hmm. who can live that life of faith. For many people, uh, you know, there are, there, there are people who feel that, um, I think that when people try or when they step out and say, you know what, I'm going to live a life of faith, it's almost like there's this unnatural resistance that rises up within them, in their mentality, in their thinking, uh, because the moment they do, uh, unfortunately, many people believe that, you know, it's only, it's only the strong. I mean, it's, if, if, you, if you're a strong believer and if you're a strong woman of, or man of God, then you can live by faith. If you're, if, you're, if you're really disciplined, then you're a really disciplined person. And, a, and I guess in a way, uh, as preachers, we've sometimes maybe even made people believe and, and think that, you know what, faith is, is for the bold and for the strong and, and uh, the ones who have it all together. Mm -hmm. um, when reality, and, and I've seen this in this last couple of weeks that I've gone and I actually did a conference in, um, in North Carolina and uh, just teaching on this and, and, you know, teaching line upon line that people were coming and saying, you mean faith is actually something that is natural to any believer? To live a life of faith is something really all of us should be able to do without necessarily uh, having just everything just the right way. And so I've seen that happen. And, and, and I've noticed that most people really, and I think even, even in, during this time, you know, people's faith has been, has been tested. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, I mean, what's going on? You're hearing things from the media. You're hearing things from the news. You, and all of a sudden now, you're going to, you've got to live a life of faith. And all of a sudden you think to yourself, you know what? I live less, and, less than an ideal life. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, it, it, yeah. you know, I don't know if you know what I mean by it. It's, it's that a lot of people, you know, they go to church, they read their Bibles, you know, but boy, when, when all of this starts going wrong yeah. in your life, you know, yeah. all of a sudden people are like, well, what I do I think do one now? of the things that happened during this crisis is that it revealed people's lack of faith. They mm -hmm. saw how carnal they were because they weren't able to stand and maintain their peace. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for, for many believers, living a life of faith also has become complicated because I think sometimes we can make it complicated for people and, and, and it's become cluttered. And so one of the things that I've noticed, and this is really what's been on my heart to teach in this, in that is that a lot of people have done exactly that and that they've basically gone and sat back and said, well, I, I, can't, I can't live by faith. You know, I, I don't have that kind of faith. I'm not, you know, I'm not an Andrew Walmack or I'm not a, you know, Kenneth Copeland or I'm not, you know, one of the, because we tend to look at people of faith and people, our leaders, to, to look at, well, that's what it means to live by faith. And so many people have just kind of sat back and it really, uh, you know, it, it, it stirred something in me because I realized that, you know what, even if you're li living less than an ideal life, you can still live by faith. You can still trust God. Amen. You can still, I mean, it, 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 Jesus never taught about how much faith you needed. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't say, if you have a bucket load of faith, then you can say to the mountain. Right. He said, if you have as little as a mustard seed. And so what I, I really felt impressed to go and look and study this. And of course, these are very well-known passages of scripture, but you know, Jesus demonstrated um, who God is in the relationship that he had with his d disciples. And many times in the disciples, we can see how uh, even we can identify with them uh, in certain circumstances and situations. So in Luke chapter eight, and verses 22 through to verse 25, this is the, the, the um, account where Jesus tells his disciples, 
you know, let's go over to the other side of the lake. Mm -hmm. And so in verse 22, it says it like this. It says, now it came to pass on the certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go over to the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. Now, you know, I, I look at that and I see, well, here's his disciples. You know, they're, they're uh, his followers and he, he gives them a command. He says, let's go over to the other side of the lake. They step out in faith. They, they get the boat. They step out in faith. They get everything in the boat. They get Jesus in the boat and they launch forth. They are going where Jesus wants them to go. They are doing what God, has, what Jesus has told them to do. And then verse 23 says, but as they sailed, he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled and emphasis here is they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. Hmm. Now, you know, what really struck me when I went back to this particular verse is that is, is how we sometimes read scripture. Uh, I don't know if, if you're like me, but you know, sometimes I can remember reading that passage of scripture and what I heard it say was that a storm of wind came down in the lake and the boat started leaking. <laughs> but it doesn't say that. No. It doesn't say it started leaking. <laughs> it says the boat was filled with water and they were in jeopardy. Now, you know, I don't know, you know, if you just think about it, how long ago was this? 2,000 years ago? Um, you know, I don't know about, you know, maybe the best boats that they ever had, you couldn't fill it with water and it would still float. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it so? Yeah. And you know, what I see here is this, is I see here are the disciples, they acted on what Jesus told them to do and and everything that could go wrong went wrong. And it didn't just start to leak. Their boat was full of water, but what they didn't notice is that they weren't sinking. I never thought of that. Oh, wow. Pretty good. They weren't, they, they weren't sinking. Now, you know, you just think about how, however big the boat was or deep the boat was, you know. Now the next verse says, they came to him. Where was he? He was in the back of the boat. So they came to him. So they had to wade through water hmm. to get to Jesus in the back of the boat, right? Yeah. I mean, if the boat was maybe, maybe waist deep, they wading through the water, the boat is not sinking. It was like I always say, when a boat is full of water, those boats were full of water and only ever went one way and that's not to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> it, it only went down, right? right? And it says, they came to him and awoke him saying, master, master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and uh, uh, the raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm. Now the next verse is, is really a, another, another aspect of this that really shocked me. And it says, and he said to them, where is your faith? Hmm. Now, you know, he didn't say to them, well, why is there so little faith? He says, where is your faith? I mean, you don't ask somebody, where, you know, where is your faith if there is some? Right. Here's his disciples. And here's Jesus with his disciples. Now, we know he could walk on water, right? Yeah. I don't see him getting out of the boat. I mean, I'm not, and, and again, it's like Andrew said, you know, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is true. God is pleased, desires for us to live and have faith and trust him because that's what faith means is to trust him. But here's his disciples. You know, it's interesting. Um, I don't know how much time we got here, but when I have a look at this, if you go to Mark, the book of Mark chapter four, mm -hmm. and in Mark chapter four, verse 36, it says, and uh, when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in, a sh in the ship and they were now, this tells us that there were other ships with them. Hmm. And, and it says, and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. <laughs> 
I mean, it just, it just blows my mind when I see that. And, you know, it was full, yet they weren't sinking. Hmm. And why? Well, because they were acting on what Jesus said. Amen. You know, I heard somebody years ago say this, and I've coined it uh, as, as something that I say. Is he didn't say to them, let's go to the middle of the lake and sink. Mm. Right. He didn't right. say, let's go to the middle of the lake and drown. He said, let's go over to the other side. And they obeyed. And they stepped out on that. But notice it says that the boat was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. One day when I see Jesus and I can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him and sit around the table like this, I'm going to ask him how he slept on that pillow. <laughs> right. You know, I've been in the Navy. I've been in the Army. I've <laughs> slept in, and it's not good. I could never sleep on anything wet. But it says, and they, they woke him and said unto him, Master... Now, listen, listen to what he says here. He says, carest thou not that we perish? I think that many times our faith is uh, sabotaged because of what I call opposing beliefs. You know, we, we say, yes, Jesus, I believe you. I'm going to do this. But then at the same time, we have an opposing belief Yes, Jesus, I'm going to believe that you love me. Or I'm, I'm going to believe that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. But then I have, I have this opposing belief. I don't really think you care. And that's an opposing belief. Mm -hmm. And that steals and, and sabotages. And I believe that's what sabotaged their faith. But what is amazing to me here is that he, they, they, he said, it carest now not, not that we perish. And it says, he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea and said, peace be still. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now, that, I mean, that just blew me away when I see that. And I think to myself, well, you know, the thing is, I, I, we say, you might, be, you might be watching the show today. You might be listening to this Bible study today. And you might think to yourself, you know what? I just don't have what it takes. I just don't have the faith. But what I see here is that even though Jesus could walk on water, he didn't get out the boat and say, now, guys, I'm sorry. I love you. I care for you. I desire everything of the best for you. I wish I can help you. <laughs> If only you had a little bit of faith, I could maybe work with that. Because Gary says they have no faith. And I think that when, when we start, you know, uh, encouraging people to live a life of faith, is for them to understand how little faith it really takes. Here's Jesus. He, he delivered them. He set them free. He, and in fact, Matthew, you know, in the book of Matthew chapter 8, this is the same account. I'm not going to go read it. But in verse 24, it says this about the ship. It says, the ship was covered with the waves of the sea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't just wet, you know. Uh, so for me, I want you to know that a life of faith is inspired by the knowing of how much God values and cares for people. Amen. For me, this story tells, this, the, 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 uh, tells us the, the true essence of, of God and his relationship with each and every one of us. Yes, I truly believe that as, as uh, Paul wrote to Timothy there, and says, fight the good fight of faith, the lay a hold on eternal life. Yes, that's what God desires for us. That's what, what Paul encourages us to. But you know what? Sometimes um, some people are sitting and saying, you know, I don't know if I have what it takes. You have what it takes. You have what it takes because you are somebody that God cares about. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you dare to step out, just dare to step out on what he said and trust him. Uh, he comes through for you, you know. Uh, if Jesus is on your side and, and you step out, these disciples, they, and Matthew says, and they were on the other side. When he calmed to see, they were on the other side. I love to put it this way. God is going to take you to where you need to go 
Now, you might be wet when you get there. <laughs> you might be wet and yeah. cold when you get there. Yeah. But if you dare to step out on faith, in faith and trust God, mm -hmm. you might in the middle of it all come to the place where, man, I'm, I'm discouraged or I'm fearful or whatever it is. You will make it to the other side. Now, it might not be, you know, all sunshine and roses, but you will make you will get to where God wants you to be. God will take you to, to your purpose in life. God will take you uh, and bring you to the place where you want to, just like Jesus did with his disciples. Amen. 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 That's what we're doing is fighting the good fight, fight of faith. faith. It's, it's really a matter of faith. I taught on something similar to this just last weekend that when Jesus' disciples said, why couldn't we cast him out? He didn't say it's because of your little faith. He says it's because of your unbelief. unbelief. They had faith. It yeah. was this unbelief that hindered it. And if we just focus on the fact that we do have faith. Yes. You can't get born again without faith. Without faith. You That's got it. it. You just yeah. need to use what you got. Yeah. And, and you know, the gospel... Uh, is what actually activates the true gospel, the good news gospel of Jesus Christ, is what activates faith within any person. It's the measure of faith God has given each man. Yeah, and I like to quote uh, Galatians 5, 6, faith works by, by love. love. And you mentioned this, but see, they said, do you not care that we perish? They, it was their lack of love that actually caused their faith to falter. Yeah. And you minister on this a lot. That's man. right. If people could understand how God loves us completely separate That's from our work, yes. then you trust yeah. Him. That's it. It'd be easy to. Amen. Do. I mean, when you're, when you're convinced and persuaded of, of God's love and His value for you, then, you, can't then you can't help but trust Him. Yeah. And I think that those are the, those um, uh, opposing beliefs. I call it... You can call it unbelief or opposing beliefs. And a lot of people think that, you know, uh, opposing a belief is when I try, I don't trust or I don't believe the actual promises of God. Uh, no, it is, there's a lot of times where you can actually trust the actual promises of God because how can you not uh, believe in the promises of God? I mean, every time you open this Bible, it's never going to change. It's right there. In, in, in The promises are right here. But it's it's when we going to trust God, but at the same time think, well, God's actually angry with me. And that undermines everything. Mm -hmm. God is, God, God doesn't care. Uh, you know, he, uh, God doesn't love me. And boy, I tell you that, then you go down the rabbit hole. I often think of a little kid, you know, and the parents saying, you know, they're in the swimming pool and he says, jump, I'll mm -hmm. catch you. And the kid's afraid of the water, but if you trust Yes. The parents, you know that they'll take care of you. And so that kid will jump off into the deep end of the pool, pool yeah. which would normally kill him, but because of that relationship. Absolutely. They'll do it. And that's yes. all that faith is, is trusting God. Amen. Yeah. When you're having trouble believing, you're having trouble trusting God. Amen. You're doubting His goodness. That's it. Yeah. Let's take some questions here. we got about 11, 12 minutes left. Yes, you got any absolutely. questions? Yes, we have some great questions. So uh, Ruthie on chat says, faith is obedience. When you have a picture of something God has given to you, how do you know when it is time to act or when to simply prepare to do what he has for us to do? So how do we decipher the timing? Well, you know, I think for every person that's, that's different. You know, I mean, uh, that's where an intimate relationship Amen. with God and the Holy Spirit becomes so important. Uh, it's not just knowing, well, this is what God wants me to do, but being in that intimate relationship with the Father through uh, the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's leading, uh, that God will give you, He'll give you wisdom. He will give you understanding. He will give you, now is the right time. He'll give you answers to whatever problems you know, are hindering your future. So for me, I would say that um, it is everything to do with intimacy with God and knowing God, Amen. walking and knowing His voice, knowing His leading. You know, um, some people, I mean, it's the Holy Spirit will speak in a loud voice and tell them, but 99% of the time, 
uh, he will lead you with that, that inward witness. Yeah. I call it the peace of God. Let the peace of God, God rule in your heart. Rule. So you may know God wants you to do something, but do you have peace about it? You just meditate on it and seek the Lord until you get peace. Absolutely, yes. It's like, you know, quitting your medicine. Some people know that eventually you're going to have to quit your medicine if you believe you're healed. But do you have peace about doing it now or do you need to build yourself up and encourage yourself in the that's Lord? Right. Wait until you have peace before you step out. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I think that's why your teaching of uh, the true nature of God is so important mm -hmm. because you can trust, you can understand His love when you understand who He is. He is love. Yep. Yeah. Right? Praise God. Uh, so Lynn on Facebook says, does fighting the good fight fight of faith mean standing on the truth of the word over anything you see with your eyes or circumstances? In other words, walking by faith and not by sight no matter what? Is that what you mean by fight the fight? The fight of faith? Yes, I believe yes. I, you, I can say absolutely true that she's got it right. But I believe that, uh, you know, if you go and look at the actual uh, passage of Scripture, um, there's a definite article in front of that word faith. Now, in the old, in the old King James, it just says, fight the good fight of faith. But uh, many of the newer translations have actually corrected it because fight the good fight of the faith. Mm. Now, it's a little, there's a little twist to this for me, and that is, yes, of course, it means to stand on the Word, to stand on the promises of God, believe the promises of God above everything else, your circumstances or situations, whatever that is. But the term that, that is used, fight the good fight of the faith, is also found, um, you know, where, uh, I just went out right, um, no, um, in fact, what, is that, what is his name? <laughs> um, I knew, I knew, uh, uh, is it uh, uh, Jude? Uh, contend for the faith. Contend for the faith. Where he, Jude, he, he says, fight, that's the same term. Contend earnestly, he says, for the faith. Now, uh, the Amplified Bible does a great job. The Amplified Bible says that the faith is the sum of Christian belief handed down to the saints. So it, it's, it's, not, it's not the question of saying, well, I'm going to use my faith to fight, you know, the enemy or this circumstance or situation. It is exactly that. It is to keep on believing the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and everything he has accomplished on your behalf. Keep on believing that. Have your focus on that. That takes uh, contending. That's what it means to contend earnestly for the faith, which is the, I say it like it's the sum total of all the gospel truth that has been handed down to us from the saints. Keep on believing that. Keep on believing in the love of God. Keep on believing in the forgiveness of God. Keep on believing in the goodness of God. Uh, you know, see yourself uh, a recipient of everything Jesus came to not only show us, but do for us. And it's a done deal. As Andrew's teaching, uh, you already got it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Got another question? Yes, absolutely. We have Bill on Facebook. He says, I know we are all given the measure of faith of Christ, but why is it that some seem to have stronger faith than others? <laughs> well, it, it, personally, I think that it's not a question that other people have stronger faith, is that other people have practiced their faith. That means they've exercised their faith. Andrew, I don't know if you... Let me put a different twist on this, that it's not that some people have stronger faith or more faith than others. Some people have eliminated the doubt. The doubt. That's what Jesus said, Absolutely. Matthew 17, 20. Why couldn't we cast him out? It wasn't because they didn't have faith. If you got born again, your faith that you use for salvation is more than enough to see the dead raised Absolutely. or anything else yes, if you doubt not. If you doubt not. And most people don't fight unbelief. What they do is say, oh God, give me more faith. 
Unbelief comes by hearing just the same as uh, faith comes by hearing. It comes by hearing all of the other stuff contrary to the Word. That's right. So when you hear something that is contrary to the Word, a doctor's report, a banker's report, anybody else, your own thoughts, you have to take those thoughts captive. Mm. And it says, uh, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises against you. And I believe the reason they connected those is because words are weapons. And when you hear somebody say, God doesn't heal today, mm -hmm. or God doesn't love you if you haven't done everything right, those things bring unbelief and most people don't counter them. So your faith is more than enough to see the dead raised. I've seen multiple people raised from the dead and it wasn't a great faith statement. It was just, I had no doubt associated with it. That's right. The very first person that I saw raised from the dead, I was getting ready to start the service and a guy came to the door and motioned. I walked over and he grabbed me and stuck me in the car. And in two minutes, he drove me over to his dad's house. I'd been praying for him for months. And I just thought he needed prayer for something. So I walked in and the sheriff was there and the wife and she says, oh God, bring him back from the dead. And when I heard dead, that's the first time I knew he was dead. Mm -hmm. And I said, Everett, come back into your body. And he just sat up. I didn't have time to think about it. Yeah. If they would have told me and given me 15 minutes, <laughs> yes. I would have had thoughts Probably. of unbelief yeah. come and That's it right. would have hindered my faith. And I think there's another aspect to that too. And you know, when, when Jesus there says, and doubt not, mm -hmm. he, the word he uses is diakrino. And diakrino, it comes from two Greek root words. The one is, uh, you know, uh, to, to oppose because of something, mm -hmm. to, f by reason of. Like I'm opposing something by reason of. Krino is uh, because of, uh, uh, it actually, Krino literally means to be under judgment. And so uh, I believe uh, Jesus was actually talking there about the fact if, you, if your belief system is not based in a place of condemnation and guilt and fear, because, you know, even, even though if somebody says to you, you know, um, you know, this person is dead, but if your heart is deeply rooted in the love and the goodness of God and who he really is, that foundation overcomes that negative. Yeah. If and this brings me back to what you started talking about, that some people think that they just can't operate in faith. They think that faith is for the super saints, not for them. That is unbelief. Unbelief. And That's if exactly. you have that, and if you have this constant fear that, well, you know, I doubt if anybody watching tonight doubts that faith works. Yes, they nobody just doubt, doubt that. that they have it or that sure. their faith is sufficient. Yeah. And if you live with that mindset, that's unbelief. That's contrary to what the Word says. And you have to attack that Amen. and say, no, my faith is sufficient. Amen. My faith overcomes the world. And if you don't take those thoughts captive, well, then you've got the mustard seed amount of faith that would produce the miracle. You just got all this other unbelief. That's that right. Absolutely. It. Yep. Faith really isn't hard, but it's these other thoughts and we don't take them captive because we think, well, that would be arrogant on my part to think that I can't fail. Well, you can fail if you doubt, but if you believe, it says that this is the victory that overcomes the world and you have to come to a place you where I faith. will not fail because I'm believing God. That's right. So, you know, that means, and you've just said what I really wanted to bring out, and that is every one of us can live and is qualified to live a life of faith Absolutely. and to see the benefits of that. And when you got born again, you had as much faith as you will ever have. That's right. You don't get more faith, but I believe you can purify that faith. That's right. You can get, you know, it's, uh, you stick a tea bag in water and you just barely touch it and you just got a tiny bit of tea in there, yeah. but you leave that in there and soak and after a while that thing gets saturated and you call, talk about your tea being stronger are weaker, but really it's just a matter of how much Amen. you let it saturate Amen. you. That's Every right. one of us have faith. Amen. You don't have a faith problem. You got an unbelief problem and we aren't standing against the unbelief. Amen. Julianne mentioned before we went on the, uh, on the air tonight that she's quit watching television because it's just so negative. Yep. Well, another way of saying that is that the, un the news is just full of unbelief and doubt and criticism and you and don't fear. feel good about it, fear. fear. And so you cut it off and what that does, it doesn't make you have more faith, but you have less unbelief right. pulling That's you right. in the other direction. Yep. Right. Yep. 
Right. Well, we're out of time. Amen. That was good. That was good. Yeah. I think that'll minister to people. Amen. 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 So we want to encourage you that, you know, we have people standing by at our phones right now, 719-635-1111, and you can call, you can receive prayer. If you've got questions, mm -hmm. I've got a lot of teaching on this. If you'd ask your question, they can usually direct you to a place. Uh, Arthur, did you put your uh, address out or what's your website? How do people get hold of My website is, it's, it's on the there screen there, ArthurManches.com. They'll have to look at that because who would know that that is Manches? <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're from South Africa, that's a common or, name, but or, over here. Yeah, or from, or, he actually or, said it with a Southern accent. Did you that, hear that? I know. That was yeah. really good. But anyway, <laughs> you can go to Arthur's website. And how many books do you have, Arthur? I have uh, four books right now. There's a fifth one coming out in uh, hopefully the beginning of December. Uh, don't have the, the actual title yet because I'm still kind of between the title, but it will be on identity. And so people will be able to find that there. And then also we are launching a brand new website. So m maybe people will go to our website. Um, there's a brand new website uh, being launched any minute this week. <laughs> so, but you've got a lot of uh, teaching. A lot on of CDs. teaching, a lot of CD teaching, yes. audio teaching. So anyway, teaching. if you've been ministered to, we would love to help you even more. You can call for prayer. You can get product. You can go to Arthur's uh, website, and I believe it would be a real blessing to you. So remember, we do this every Tuesday night when I'm here, but then we have five Bible studies a week. Julianne gave those times. You can go to our website and find out. But we just want to help you get into the Word of God and help the Word of God get into you. You. Amen. Amen. We love you. So thank you for being with us. God Amen. bless you. We'll see you next week. Praise God.